How's it going folks? It is Matt back with another Digibyte video. I want to apologize in advance. There's a large truck outside my neighbor's house. I think they're about to start cutting down a part of his tree. So if there is some loud background noises, that is what that is. But again, today's video is on Digibyte. And today's video is also brought to you by ChangeAngel.io, the swap exchange for social good. ChangeAngel has two giveaways going on right now. One, they have partnered up with cryptos. They sell cryptocurrency socks, and they're giving you the opportunity to win three pairs of socks, one pair of Digibyte, one pair of Litecoin, and one pair of Dogecoin. And they're also having a separate giveaway to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the founding of the Digibyte awareness team, and they're giving away 5,000 Digibyte. So I'll provide links to both of these tweets in the description so you can participate if you want to. Speaking of Change Angel, they have also sponsored the blockchain and AI um, event going on in Malta. Stephen P. Kendall is there. It is going on right now at this moment. It's, start, it's running through today and tomorrow. And it's, it's a good opportunity for Digibyte to showcase some of their capabilities to all of the people at this event. It's not like an event where they're going to announce a new product or anything like that. There's, uh, it's more so uh, getting all of these different blockchain projects, all of, these, all of these different artificial intelligence projects in front of the face of investors and other people that can help drive the adoption of these types of technologies. So it's definitely a big deal that Digibyte is there being presented by Stephen P. Kendall and uh, getting the brand recognition out there in front of these artificial intelligence startups and in front of all of these investors. And it definitely gives the potential for some of these AI projects to look into the Digibyte blockchain to possibly build some of their AI projects on top of uh, Digibyte's blockchain. So other news to mention, if you have not done so already, please update your Digibyte core client to the latest version 7.17.2. And that is so uh, UdoCrypt can go live in July. As you can see, 47% uh, upgraded at this time. We still need some more people to upgrade their core wallets on their PCs. If you haven't downloaded a core wallet ever, highly encourage you to do that as well. It just helps... Uh, add the node count to the Digibyte blockchain and overall just uh, help the whole network. So if you haven't done that, I'll provide a link. I didn't pull an image up here, but at digibyte.io, they have a list of all the different wallets. So I'll provide a link to that in the description so you can download a core wallet and um, contribute to the Digibyte blockchain. So getting into some news, this was a tweet from Rudy Bauman saying, John Moore, who is the VP of the Nationwide Merchant Solutions, convert, confirmed to set up Digibyte payments for businesses and merchants, which is another step towards adoption. And I've, he's, he's been helping, this is uh, Johnny Litecoin, if you're unfamiliar uh, with his Twitter page. This is it. I'll provide a link to it in the description so you can follow him if you want. But he's been going around to businesses and helping them start accepting Litecoin and Bitcoin as a form of payment. And now he has agreed to start helping them implement Digibyte as well. And uh, as Rudy said here, it's it's the Block 3 from Block 30 Labs. If you purchase the Block 3, you uh, get a portion of Digibyte, Litecoin, and Bitcoin all within the Block 3. So it's cool to see people working to get merchants accepting these three big UTXO blockchains. Uh, in my opinion, they are the three best UTXO blockchains on the market. And it's nice to see if uh, businesses are accepting Bitcoin or Litecoin, if they start to accept Digibyte as well. And people may say he's Johnny Litecoin. So what's he doing helping Digibyte out by getting them into merchants? Uh, he said it best here, different cryptos are not the enemy. We should embrace the good communities like Digibyte and remember that good crypto projects help the space as a whole grow. The ability to swap into Litecoin quickly provides great liquidity for Digibyte payments and we are stronger together. And he also went on to say that, uh, you know, other projects, other crypto projects aren't the enemy. We're all in this space uh, because I guess the bank or the legacy systems have become sort of the enemy through irresponsibility and inflation and just, you know, limits, limitlessly printing money. That's not, it's not good. And that's ultimately like what got me into crypto originally was my distrust of the current system. So it's important to keep in mind that other projects, Litecoin, Bitcoin, whatever, they are not the enemy. 
as we are all in this together to see the adoption of cryptocurrency as a whole, not just one specific coin. There's obviously going to be multiple projects, multiple coins that have success in the future. So it's, it's just better for all of us if we all work together to see that adoption take place. So into other news, this is a tweet from VID. I believe they've made another partnership. So they're saying a huge step in healthcare. VID's API manages the uh, constantly updated set of certificates of 2,000 specialists with ease, keeping info verifiable within five seconds, all without impact on their existing platforms or their workflow. So this uh, image kind of details a little bit more what high care is so high care is a mediation agency that matches 2,000 professionals from many fields at all levels in healthcare in the current market there is a large shortage of well-trained people with the right certificates which puts pressure on the quality of the vetting and the selection process so through VID's API they manage the constantly updated set of certificates of 2,000 individual medical specialists with ease, keeping all info verifiable within five seconds by the employers, all with zero impact on their existing platforms or workflow. So that's a good partnership, good use case for VID. And why is that important to Digibyte? Uh, most of the documents, they use four separate blockchains, Digibyte being one of them. Uh, so when they verify a document and it goes across the Digibyte blockchain, it has to pay the Digibyte network fee, which is a small fee. Think like 0 .0001 Digibyte. So the fee is very minimal, but as more companies send documents across Digibyte's blockchain, that just adds to the amount of fees being paid, which in turn increases the demand for Digibyte to pay those network fees as uh, more documents and whatever are getting sent across the blockchain. Also in terms of VID, they have an announcement coming tomorrow. I'm unsure what it is at this moment, but they're saying, as you know, the VID business has been kicking it these past couple months with new clients, new partners, interviews, AMAs, and a lot of, uh, lots and lots of meetings. So they've come up with so many new use cases developer ideas and token ambitions that they've decided it's not just time for some new things in our roadmap, but a proper BRU. So forgive my ignorance. I'm not sure if that is an acronym for some sort of super technical term, but I just read it as bruh. Like uh, I'm, I'm guessing that when they announce this Friday, whatever, whatever it is they need to announce, maybe the general consensus is just going to be like, bruh, why didn't we think of that? Or bruh check this out you know that's just my take on it if it is some technical acronym that i am unfamiliar with feel free to let me know in the, the in the comments below uh, but definitely can't wait to see what it is because the vid has been making a ton of partnerships uh, let me just see if i can pull up vid's website somewhere and they have a list of some of the partners that they've made let's see if they got a link to it uh, let's type it in here That is the wrong website, so <laughs> definitely not going on to that website. Uh, other news, Jared Tate has released part two of Digi Assets blog. It's a technical overview. People can use it to get started. That explains how Digi Assets is built on the Digibyte blockchain. I've clicked on that link, and he does a good job of explaining it in an easy way, which he points out that he's going to do so. So I'll, I'll read this first paragraph here. It says, this is part two of my blog post describing what Digi Assets is and what it means for the future of the Digibyte blockchain. This part is written as a technical review, overview of Digi Assets. You can read part one here. There's a link to it. And while some may decide to skip the blog post because it's a technical overview, he encourages everyone to read through it and learn more about the amazing new open source addition to the Digibyte ecosystem. And he's saying that he's written it in a way to try and convey highly technical concepts in an easy to understand way, which he has done so. I've read through it. I won't read through everything because it is a little bit technical, even though it's easy to understand. I'll provide a link to it in the description if you want to read uh, some of the technicalities of it. I am going to read this part in the bottom here that I find interesting if I can find where it was at. I had it highlighted. So he, he goes on to explain the Digi Asset wallets. So which wallets will be supporting Digi Assets? Uh, right now there are three main wallets that will be building support 
into Digi Assets. These include the Digibyte Go Wallet, the Digi Vault, and the Digibyte Mobile Wallet for Android and iOS. So the Digi Vault wallet currently works, and anyone can find it on the Digibyte Core GitHub and install it themselves from the core source code. The problem is that it requires uh, a Redis server a full Digibyte client and it's very slow and cumbersome. It's not exactly user friendly at the moment. As I reported the other day when I said Digi Assets was live on the main net, this is what I was talking about. You can create an asset through DigiVault. There are a couple steps involved and it is definitely not user friendly for someone that has not yet, or someone that does not have any uh, developer knowledge, I guess being able to write code, but it, it's still live, but in the uh, user-friendly versions are coming soon. So the Digibyte Go plus Digi Assets wallet is apparently nearing release and will be fully functional wallet that will get people started right off the bat with no delay for sync times. And you can find the code or help them with development at this link here. Again, I'll provide a link to his whole blog so you can find these links if you want to read more about it. And then the third wallet is the Digibyte mobile wallet. It's being worked on in order to allow people to send, receive, and burn Digi assets. The great thing about the mobile wallet is that it is fully independent SPV wallet that connects directly to the Digibyte blockchain and does not require access uh, to a back-end API to sync itself to the blockchain you can find the code and help out at this link here so these other parts that I found interesting in his blog is saying the cost of issuing a digi asset so he says to issue your asset on the main digibyte blockchain you will need to pay a small network transaction fee that will be distributed through the network as a mining reward to whoever mines the block of the digi asset transaction to be contained in this fee will never go to any specific individual Digibyte entity or group of people. If uh, we as the Digibyte core developers or any other centralized group ever took that fee directly, it would undermine the entire concept of decentralization in a trustless environment that we have achieved with Digibyte thus far. So he's saying the exact cost of the fee of Digi Assets transaction is yet to be determined and we open that discussion to the community. The reality is there needs to be a small fee in order to prevent bloat and spam attacks on the network. For right now, during development and testing, the current fee is the normal Digibyte transaction fee, which is 0 .0001 Digibyte at this time. But he's saying they are open to increasing that fee to prevent um, people spamming the network and causing problems for the Digibyte blockchain. So he goes on to explain what these problems could be as far as spam and bloat. So as he mentioned above, there will be no uh, Digibyte transaction fee. People could easily spam thousands of Digibyte or Digi Asset transactions with an automated script that could grind the entire blockchain to a halt. With Digi Assets, we still have that problem, but we also have other potential ways people can abuse the protocol. An example of the asset issuance gone awry can be seen recently with Ravencoin. So one look at their asset explorer can demonstrate how Digi Assets can be abused with wallet annoying, crude and embarrassing asset advertisements. It's easy to uh, query the blockchain and see the top 10,000 addresses that have recently received a transaction and that sent a tiny amount to that address of an advertisement asset. If costs are trivial, this can become a massive problem, which way lead the developers are discussing a way a type uh, to type of wallet ad spam very costly to bad actors. So they'll make it very costly for people that are just causing spam or sending advertisement tokens out there. Because apparently on Ravencoin, users quickly got tired when their Raven wallets kept receiving uh, assets called herpes or payday loans and ICO advertisements. So this was one of the main reasons uh, we have no plans of bringing native Digi Asset support to the Digibyte Core QT wallet anytime soon or implementing Digi Assets natively into the core Digibyte blockchain code. We want to make sure that we do not involuntarily introduce new security vulnerabilities or a bad user experience. So uh, I would agree that we need to increase those fees to prevent these types of attacks it's it's not necessarily an attack if you if you're receiving uh, advertisement loans but it is definitely annoying if you continuously receive uh, currency in your wallet that's just payday loan or herpes uh, you definitely don't want that going around and you don't want to make it so cheap that people can just do it uh, for a very small amount of money. So in conclusion, he originally wanted to talk about the types of digi assets and specific use cases along with future development of digi assets. 
will entail in part two, but this blog post quickly lengthened. He will be writing a part three where we take a deeper dive into the different types of digi assets and specific examples. So definitely can't wait for part three where he details some of his ideas of ways digi assets can be used. And uh, I look, uh, like I just said, look forward to the release of part three. Uh, but that will wrap up today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications, like it, share it, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys later.